This is our little Yorkie, Daisy. And we were gonna do her in a little Westie trim, but she doesn't really have the furnishings for it, so I think we're gonna switch it and do maybe a little Schnauzer trim. Just to see, if, I think that would be cute on her. The nice thing about the pets is we can do pretty much whatever we want. I'm, I am still gonna do a little Yorkie, or a little Westie head on her. So you'll get to see the round, you know, bring this in a little rounder. So I'm going to start. I'm using the new Pulse Ion. It has a five in one adjustable blade on it. It goes from a 40 to a nine. I'm going to start with it in the 30, which is what I like to use for the little dogs for their pads. Uh oh. Okay, let's see if we can do her ears. All right, she just doesn't want me to do her feet. So I've got it in the 30 still. I'm humming. We're not having much luck with our sound system today. And all I'm doing is the tips. Just the inside, maybe a thumbprint there okay are you better now and I would have done her pads and her belly but we're just gonna let that go I wonder if it's the partially the noise so now because their hair it's so fine and it's thin you don't want to take it really short like you would on a like a schnauzer, a real schnauzer, or even some of the Westies we take short. So I'm going to use one of the magnetic comb attachments. This is our new Ultra Edge Green Clipper. It's kind of pretty. It's called Spring Green. You're going to see it coming out in the Excel, and the pulse will be coming out in green sometime this year. I'm not sure when. I'm going to start with a, the steel magnetic one comb. Leaves the hair, anywhere, depending on the thickness, anywhere from a half inch to three quarters of an inch. I'm using it over the, one of the new cat blades because these are great under the comb attachments. They have a finer cutter. You've got more teeth, so you're going to get more cuts every time the cuts per stroke every time the blade goes across you just pop right on now because of the way their hair drapes over their sides you don't want to come straight down the back because that's going to give you lines and then you're going to have to spend the time to get the lines out so we're just going to go off Okay, now that's not taking it quite as short as I want, so I'm going to switch down to the two. These combs are adjustable to work with a 30 blade or a 10 blade, so I want to make sure it's adjusted for a 10. And they adjust like that because the 30 blades are actually, the blade itself is a little bit smaller than the 10, so it just tightens it all up so that comb fits more snug. Hi, good girl. Oh, she's a scaredy. So, yeah, that's more the way I want it. So I'm just coming off the sides. I'm going to come down and get rid of all this long stuff. right down to where the rib cage starts to curve in. Now there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can take your clipper and as soon as that blade starts to slide under the rib, you can skim it off. You can visualize a line down the center of the table under the dog. And when you bring your clipper down, 
guide it towards that line. Or you can slide the skin up and just go off. It'll all bring, what it'll do is it'll bring this down so it layers into your chest area. I got you, baby girl. I'm going to come down and get the hair off the shoulders. We're going to come around front. Good girl, you're settling. It's like when I get too close to the clipper or something. That now, because I'm going to do a little Westy head on her, I'm going just about to where her Adam's apple would be, and that's where I'm coming down from. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just kind of start in the center and skim off to the side. Get rid of all that long stuff, all that excess hair on the tail. Come here, baby. Good job. All the excess off the shoulders. Good girl. I'm glad I don't have to do her nail. <laughs> <laughs> so there's her clipper work. And it actually, I mean, it looks very nice already. With just the comb, see it all kind of blends nice. But there's still some choppiness in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our thinning shears. These might be too big. And this has come out with a, a line of shears. They're pretty inexpensive. Um, I'm hoping they come up with a shorter thinning shear. This one's, it's great. I use it all the time in the shop, like to fine tune over the top of things. But it might be too big for this little dog, so I may have to switch to my smaller ones. So I'm just going to, I've got my Greyhound comb, and I've taken the fine edge, end of it. And I'm just using that fine end to lift this hair. And then I'm just going to top thin over it. And what that will do is that will take out any little choppy marks. It'll help blend the, the shorter hair up here into the longer furnishings. Come here, baby. You're just lifting and top thinning. One thing you don't want to do when you use your thinning shears is to come up under and cut. Because what that does is that leaves really short hairs close to the skin that when they start to grow, they'll intertwine with the longer hairs that you've left and that's going to cause a mat. So you always, pretty much in our industry, you just top thin. Your thinning shears are for working on top of the hair. We're going to lift your tail, clean this up. You don't want a lot of bulk hanging off the back end. my hand in there to 
not cutting anything important. I would always prefer to cut myself than the dog. So I always put my hand so it's protecting. I wonder if she'll let me trim her feet. You can see the difference if I, where I did this with the thinning shears, as opposed to if I go in with the straight shears. I'll do that on the other side so you can see the difference in how it's going to look. The straight shear is going to leave a much more blunt end. It also leaves a little bit of a laddering effect. Doesn't look quite as natural. You know, it's more choppy coming down where we've cut it. Good girl. You were just scared, right? just scared. So I'm going to continue lifting and thinning so I know this is blended nicely. I'm not at a very good angle. Same here on the shoulders. around to the front. Don't want to leave a bib since we're doing a schnauzer cut. We want to accentuate the shoulders. going to do it on this side. We're going to fix where I used the straight shears, which is right here where it's all choppy. Lift. Oh, girl. That takes a lot of that choppiness out. Then once we get it all blended, you can't see that way. There we go. Good girl. Good job. Now we will attempt to trim her feet. Little short shears. I have never used little shears in the 30 years I have been grooming. Anna sent me these a couple weeks ago to play with. Love them on the little dogs for working around those little tiny feet. I was like, oh, they're so little, you won't put them. They're perfect for these little guys. 
Can we do this? Probably not. I can't get her foot up where I want it. You're all right. So we're just going to trim around the outside of them. We don't want them freaking out on us again. Oh, you don't like having your feet touched. Look at all the people. Look at the people. Look at them. They want to see you get your feet trimmed. Trim around the outside of the feet. <laughs> And you want to be careful of the angle of your shears. Your shears should be either flush, even with the table, or at a 45 degree angle. If they're up like this, what's going to happen is the hair on top that you want to come down and cover the toes is going to be cut too short. And then you have these little pinched looking feet. If they're flush or at a 45 degree angle up when you go around, you'll have a nice little bevel and you, you won't have a whole lot of fixing to do. You can come around with your thinning shears and trim. I'm not going to because I don't want her to bite them. And then just shape in your legs. And again, because of the way their hair lays, it's so straight and fine, thinning shears are going to work the best. So you just take that long stuff off. You're all right. Good girl. She don't like having her face touched. Same in the front. You're going to just scissor around the edge. See, I'm not touching. Not touching. Isn't that a commercial? I'm not touching. I'm not touching. <laughs> oh, stop. You. We have to have a talk about this. Yes, we do. It's hard to do your leg if my foot's not trimmed. just try to make this as neat and tidy as possible. Probably not take a whole lot off. Since she's not going to let me do it. Take that long stuff out of the armpit. All I did was I combed it down And I just went in and nipped it. You don't want to have to go in and shave it unless it's really badly matted. But I just go in and, and nip it out with my thinning shears or my straight, the points of my straight shears. That way when they come back in six weeks or so, it won't be matted because there's no hair there to mat. We're gonna do, we would do the same thing on the other side. can trim your back leg. You can just pull this up. We have the line that we came down. Pull it up and then just take your thinning shears off the long step and it'll fall really nice. Trim the front leg. And then you just need to set your underline which really shouldn't be any lower than the elbow. Should be just about to there.
She's got a couple little lines I got in there by mistake. Just trying to get them out. And then you can just go in and clean it up. Once you get it where you want, if you take your curved shears and go in reverse, That'll give you a nice clean underline. That way, baby girl. And that is our little Yorkie. It does not have her feet trimmed yet. <laughs> we may take her behind the, into the bathroom or something and force the issue. Right? What do you say? Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs>